Here's a question. Where do we run AI models? Everyone knows the answer to that one. We run them in servers with GPUs. GPUs are much more efficient at processing AI models or to be more precise, at inference. Here's another question though. How do we manage models across those servers? The answer to that question is Kubernetes. Kubernetes is the de facto standard to manage any type of workloads, be it stateless apps, stateful apps, jobs, AI models, or anything else. We just need to tell Kubernetes how much memory and CPU our workloads need, and it will figure out where to put them and how to run them. However, with AI, our primary requirement is not the amount of memory and CPU, but rather the amount of GPU we need. Whether GPU is dedicated to a single process exclusively or shared across processes and a few other things. In other words, the way we manage GPU-based workloads is different from more traditional workloads, yet somehow the same. Today we will skip explanation why AI works better with GPUs than CPUs and focus on running AI models and managing GPUs in Kubernetes. We will explore not only how to run AI models in Kubernetes, but also how to do it in a way that does not result in bankruptcy. Speaking of bankruptcy, apart from being careful how many GPUs we use and whether they are shared among processes, you might want to check out Cast AI, the sponsor of this video. With Cast AI, you might cut up to 50% cost of using AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud. It continuously monitors your clusters and applies changes in real time to keep your configuration optimal. You will be able to view your expenses in one place, monitor them in real time, and break them down by cluster or workloads or labels. It automatically adjusts workloads, requests, and limits so that you are using exactly what you need and stop paying to your cloud provider obscene figures. Head out to Cast AI and try it out. And thank you, Cast AI, for sponsoring this video. And now we can get back to the main subject. I already have a Kubernetes cluster running. It's a normal cluster that happens to be GKE in Google Cloud. Nevertheless, the logic behind the rest of the video should be the same no matter where your cluster is. That cluster does not have any nodes with GPUs, so there are at least three tasks we need to perform to make it AI ready. To begin with, we need to figure out how to create nodes or node groups with GPUs. Now, those nodes would not be of much use by themselves. We would also need to install device plugins that will let pods access specialized hardware features, which in this case are GPUs. Finally, we need to instruct our pods to use those GPUs. Let's start from the beginning. Here are the nodes of my cluster. As I already mentioned, none of those nodes currently used by that cluster have GPUs. Hence, we should add a node group or a node pool with GPUs to the cluster. But before we do that, we need to figure out what is available for a given provider. In case of Google Cloud, we can list all those currently available. Those are accelerators that we can pick. We also need to select a machine just as we would normally do, except that those with GPUs tend to be labeled differently. Anyways, we'll create a new node pool that will be attached to the dot cluster. Since I'm cheap, we will select the smallest machine type, only one node, and most importantly, choose NVIDIA Tesla A100 as the GPU. Here are the nodes of the cluster now that we created a second node group. That's it. That's all it takes to add nodes with GPUs to the cluster. And with that single action, we not only added nodes with GPUs to the cluster, but we made sure that those nodes have the necessary device plugins installed. Now, to be clear, not all providers are just as easy as Google Cloud and the instructions for your favorite provider might vary. What matters is that we did two out of three steps to run AI models in the cluster and the rest is going to be the same no matter which provider you are using. We are almost ready to use those new GPU nodes. The only thing missing is to double check taints of those nodes. The important thing to note is that those nodes have the no schedule taint effect, 
meaning that no pods will be scheduled to run in them unless we explicitly specify the matching toleration. Now we should be able to run our own or third-party apps that contain models that require GPUs. We'll opt for the latter since it's easier and by exploring the outcome will give us a better understanding of what is required. We'll run Olama which already has a Helm chart available and all we have to do is specify the type of GPU it should use. Now, I will assume that you are familiar with Olama AI models. If that's not the case and you would like me to explore it in more detail, all you have to do is let me know in the comments of this video. Here is an example of Helm values file that we will use. Over there we're specifying the GPU usage should be enabled, that we are using Nvidia for that and that the application should use only one. GPU. Further on, since Olama allows us to use quite a few models, we are specifying that today we are interested only in Llama 2. The rest are ingress values that are not relevant for today's subject. Now, to be clear, those values by themselves will not help you understand how to use GPU with your own or with any other third-party models. However, later on we will inspect what Olama deployed and that will enable us to deduce what we should specify if we would like to use GPU with virtually any application or any model since the logic is always the same. Let's apply the chart. Now comes the important part. Since all the changes we should do to make containers in pods use GPU are in the manifest of those pods, we can inspect the deployment Olama created. Since that deployment creates a replica set which creates the pods, that should give us a clue as to what we should do to use GPUs. The first thing you will notice are environment variables, NVIDIA driver capabilities and NVIDIA visible devices. The first one specifies the GPU should accelerate compute and utility. We could have specified that it should accelerate video as well, but since Blama 2 model does not support video, there is no need for that one. We could have set it to all if we are too lazy. That's what is used with the NVIDIA visible devices, which specified which devices will be injected by the NVIDIA container runtime. Those environment variables are not that important. What is important is that limits in resources is set to use maximum one NVIDIA.com GPU. That should be self-explanatory. I cannot afford more than one GPU, so that's what I'm using. Finally, we have tolerations which, in general, allow us to tell the scheduler to place pods only on nodes with matching taints. In this case, we are telling it to place the pods with the model only on nodes that have the key set to NVIDIA.com slash GPU. That's the same key that was set to the nodes of the node pool with GPUs we created earlier. As a result, it is clear to Kubernetes that the pods with Llama 2 model should run only on specific nodes on, on those with GPUs. Since those instructions were set to the deployment template, the end result is that we have a pod running in the only node with GPU and is using that GPU to accelerate calculations. Now we can use the local Olama client to communicate with the model running in the cluster. To do that, first we will define the environment variable Olama host to point to the ingress endpoint and list all available models. There is only one model since that's what we specified. The important part is that we proved that the model is running in the cluster and that we can access it. Let's use it by executing Olama run Llama 2 and passing it a question. Any question. The first thing you'll notice is that it was lightning fast. GPU accelerated the calculation and we got an answer almost instantly. Now, let's say that we would like to run a second model. Normally, that would be something completely different, but for the sake of simplicity, we'll apply the same one again, but with a different name. What do you think happened? Is the second model running? Hmm? Let's check it out. The second model is in the pending state. Kubernetes cannot place it and we can try to figure out why is that so by describing that pod. We can see that there are no available GPUs. None of the nodes can accommodate that pod. The explanation for that behavior is simple. We have only a single node with a single GPU. We try to run two models, each requesting a single GPU. The first one got it, while the second is left wondering why there are no GPUs available for it. Now, there are two solutions to this problem. The obvious one would be to create another node with the GPU so that it can be assigned to the second model. If our models would be running at full capacity, that could be the solution. However, that's not the case today. The first model is hardly used and it would be a waste of money 
to get an additional GPU for the second model that also might not be used all the time. A better solution could be to have those two models share the same GPU. After all, GPUs are very, very expensive and we might not have an infinite number of them. Fortunately, we can tell Kubernetes nodes to partition GPUs. The way how to accomplish that might differ from one provider to another. Today, we will explore how to do it in Google Cloud and you should be able to adapt it to whichever provider you might be using. We'll start by destroying the node pool we created and create a new one just as we did before, but, and this is important, this time with an additional accelerator instruction to partition GPU into 1G.5GB sizes. The GPU partition size of 1G.5GB refers to a GPU instance with one compute unit or one seventh of streaming multiprocessors on the GPU and one memory unit of five gigabits. Now, to be clear, there's a bit of dark magic involved, so you might not be able to set partition sizes without checking the documentation. Don't try to use intuition since it won't get you far. Consult the documentation. Don't try to find logic, just do what it says. Anyways, now that we replace the old with the new node that partitions GPU usage to up to seven units, we can take another look at the pods with Olama models. We can see that this time both pods are running. Even though each of them requested one GPU, the node itself now allows up to seven pods to share that same GPU. Hence, both pods are now running and I won't go bankrupt. And that's it. That's all you should know to run models in containers inside the Kubernetes cluster. Nevertheless, before we part ways, I have a suggestion that might improve your resource utilization even more. If the models are not used heavily and constantly, we might be able to optimize the setup even more by using Knative. Instead of having long running pods, with Knative we can have a system that scales unused pods to zero or scales them back up to whichever number is required to meet the demand. Some might call that serverless computing. Now, even though Knative is typically used with normal, often stateless applications, I would argue that it could be a perfect match for running models that require GPUs. Please let me know in the comments if you would like me to explore such a solution. Another alternative could be to use KubeWirt to run models inside virtual machines managed by Kubernetes and virtual machines in the same cluster. I can explore that one as well. Just let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.